How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a final year medical student studying in Canada and this is going to be video three on my series looking at all of the different Canadian medical specialties. Now I know that in the past I said I was going to be starting at the top and working my way down alphabetically but there are more than 30 Canadian medical specialties and as it turns out you guys want to see some a little bit more than others. I have a lot of requests for certain videos so moving forward if there are any specialties that you want to see sooner rather than later you gotta let me know in the comment section below and as always just go ahead and hit that like button if you want to see the series keep going. Now for today's video, we're going to be talking all about dermatology, which means that if you are a dermatologist, please go ahead and let us know some stuff about your specialty in the comment section below. Did I get stuff right? Did I get stuff wrong? What do you want students to know? Because I'm hoping that these videos are going to be great resources for students. So now we take it from the top. Dermatology is the first specialty that deals with benign and malignant disorders of the skin, mouth, external genitalia, hair, nails, as well as a number of sexually transmitted diseases. Dermatologists engage in a variety of procedural work and have the opportunity to combine cognitive skills with surgical skills. They also have expertise in the care of normal skin and in the prevention of skin disease and skin cancers. The takeaway from that introduction, I think, is that dermatology is a great specialty to consider if you're someone that wants to operate in a clinical setting but still do a lot of different procedural stuff. So next, we'll talk about how you actually become a dermatologist once you're done medical school. After completion, it takes about an additional five years of a Royal College approved residency training program in order to become certified in dermatology. This training includes two years of basic clinical training, which must include a minimum of 12 months of internal medicine, three months of pediatrics, and must include specific rotations in rheumatology, infectious disease, and oncology. In addition, rotations in plastic surgery, emergency medicine, and pathology are also going to be recommended. So it is five years of training after medical school and a lot of different work in the different specialties. In addition though, that training is only possible if you're first accepted into a dermatology residency. So we could go over some of the stats for this upcoming cycle. Cycle, the cycle that I'm participating in. I'm not trying to match into dermatology, but if I were, there are 30 spots across the entire country looking at all of the different schools in the different streams. Dermatology has traditionally been very competitive. And we look at last year's cycle, it was the second most competitive medical specialty. I believe behind ENT surgery was the top last year. Dermatology took a close second with an R value of 0.53, which means roughly speaking for every two people that wanted a dermatology residency, there was one spot. So now we can get into some fun facts of dermatology and dermatologists. When you look at the breakdown for how many dermatologists there are in Canada, they're also relatively rare. There's about 1.7 dermatologists, so roughly two dermatologists for every 100,000 people that you have in a particular population, and that changes by whichever province you're in. There are also family doctors that do additional training in dermatology and have extended their scope of practice to include more dermatology, but as far as the Royal College trained dermatology graduates, this is why you see them so infrequently in a population. Now, in terms of where you could find them, the vast majority of dermatologists choose to work in a private clinic or a private practice at approximately 79%. 13% of them will go on to work at an academic health science center or at least spend some of their time within a health science center. 5% will be in other places. And then finally, the last 3% will be in a community clinic or a health center within the community. Now next, we can look at the average number of hours worked per week for dermatology and some of the lifestyle factors with dermatology. Dermatology is one of the E-Road medical specialties, which traditionally offers some of the best lifestyles in medicine. But for that reason, they're going to be working some of the lowest hours across all the different medical specialties. When you look at their breakdown, you can factor in a little bit of additional time on call. It works out to around 50 or just over 50 hours per week, which is still more by about 10 hours per week than the average working Canadian citizen. But compared to all of the other medical specialties, they'll fall on this side of the curve and probably work some of the least hours per week. Now, the second half of being an E-Road specialty, in addition to working some great hours of work for the most part, is that the pay tends to be a little bit better for these specialties too. And what you'll see for dermatology, the countrywide average is about $410,000 with a listed average overhead of about 35%, which typically, you know, tends to go up if you're running a private clinic, which a lot of dermatologists tend to do. This $410,000 number though, you have to remember is the average across all of Canada. And in some provinces, they're going to be making more than that on average. And in some provinces, they're going to be making less than that on average. I also know that here in Ontario, anyways, from my experience, if you're able to find a recent graduate that's able to operate a full functioning clinic with 
with a full patient roster and they're willing to put in, you know, overtime and additional hours of work above that 50 hours per week on average, then their pay is going to go up a lot higher than 410,000. This is before taxes and before overhead, obviously, but you know, anywhere between 500 to maybe 600 and beyond in some cases, you'll definitely be able to find that here in Ontario. And finally, we'll get to a very important metric, which is the work-life balance, which is reported directly from the people that they interviewed from dermatologists themselves, what they think about how their job affects their work and how their work is actually making them feel otherwise. What you'll see is that in everyone that answered the survey, about 37% of all of these specialists actually reported being satisfied or very satisfied with their current work-life balance. When you look at their current professional life, though, you'll see that 68% of them were actually very happy with their job. Now, I think this is really interesting because I've made the comment before that even with some of these E-Road medical specialties, some of the specialties that work some of the best hours in medicine, that doesn't always necessarily mean that the people working them are going to have the best work-life balance on average. There are so many more factors to consider here and regardless of what specialty you get into, medicine does involve working long hours and there's a lot of extra commitments that come even outside of your job and that's how I think we could explain this 37% work-life balance. Now to wrap it up, my thoughts about dermatology as a profession, I think dermatology is awesome. It's a really cool profession for someone like myself that's interested in both clinic-based medicine and still doing some procedures, but there are some things to not like about it and some myths to dispel. First of all, when you talk to dermatologists and when you see dermatologists on TV, for example, here in Canada anyways, there are certain procedures that you'll see on TV, for example, that will involve them extracting these massive growths from inside, you know, different spots on people's extremities and that doesn't typically happen. That's not the normal day for a dermatologist here in Canada and that's pretty dangerous. A lot of those procedures are saved for the plastic surgeons. I've also done some work for plastic surgery and they've also said that yeah you can't really do these things in an outpatient clinic because the threat of blood loss is real and you don't want something bad happening outside of the hospital. Now that's not to discredit the work that the dermatologists actually do though because a lot of the stuff that they do for people makes patients feel really good right away and as a practitioner that makes you feel really good. It's really rewarding to be able to help someone and for them to see a noticeable improvement as there right away or within a few different applications and that's not the only thing that dermatologists do but the downsides of dermatology for example is that you're a specialist and like all specialties you're narrowing your approach and for that reason if you want to be someone that's going to be casting broken bones it's going to be helping treat viral illness that's going to be helping with babies or delivering babies or providing health care for people over long periods of time involving different complex systems then dermatology is not going to be for you but anyways everyone that's all i have to say about dermatology for today i hope this answered some questions i hope that it was useful for anyone considering a career in dermatology and let me know what you want me to talk about for the next one we'll see you all in the next video everyone take care